What's up everybody? I am back again with another video and today we were going on a different reaction. So let me read the title real quick. Why Jaru regrets dissing Eminem's daughter. So this is gonna be good, y'all. So y'all know to do like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and make sure you don't miss another video and let's get into it. The hell? Eminem and Ja Rule were two of the biggest names in hip-hop, and during their early careers, their trajectories were strikingly similar. Both artists broke through in 1999 with successful debut albums, Eminem with the Slim Shady LP and its hit single My Name Is, and Ja Rule with Benny Betty Vici and his own chart-topping track, Holla Holla. Over the next few years, they, along with DMX and Jay-Z, became central figures in hip-hop, dominating the charts with popular albums and singles. Despite their shared success, Eminem and Ja Rule were packaged differently. Ja Rule became known for his R&B pop crossover collaborations, working with artists like Ashanti and Jennifer Lopez. At the time, it was uncommon for a rapper to sing or harmonize as frequently and successfully as Ja Rule did. He continued to release several chart-topping hip-hop R&B hits, including Between Me and You, featuring Christina Milian, Always On Time, and Mesmerize, featuring Ashanti, and I'm Real, featuring Jennifer Lopez. This pop-friendly approach propelled Ja Rule to global superstardom, earning him Grammy nominations and solidifying his status as one of the leading rappers of the new millennium. Meanwhile, in 1999, Eminem released his debut studio album, The Slim Shady LP, which catapulted him to the very top of the hip-hop game. Known for his vivid, shocking, and often gruesome lyrics, as well as his deep storytelling and sharp wit, Eminem carved out his own path in the hip-hop world. Additionally, as a white artist excelling in a traditionally black art form, everything he released quickly rose to the top of the charts, which he acknowledged in his 2002 song, White America, from the Eminem show. Let's do the math. If I was black, I would have sold half. I ain't have to graduate from Lincoln High School to know that. While Ja Rule maintained a strong presence in hip-hop, Eminem stood alone at the very top eventually becoming the highest selling hip hop artist of all time. His influence within the genre and among his loyal fan base gave him the power to significantly damage careers with just a few sharp lyrics. Eminem's confrontational nature also made him a lightning rod for controversy. Beyond his record breaking catalog, he is well known for his numerous public feuds with various entertainers. A key aspect of his persona as a rapper has been his tendency to mock fellow celebrities in his music, often in a crude manner and without concern for public opinion. He has never shied away from a public feud, armed with his ability to both outrap and outsell his opponent. Due to his combative nature, Eminem has publicly clashed with a wide range of figures, including Michael Jackson, Moby, Christina Aguilera, NSYNC, Nick Cannon, and Mariah Carey, among others. His feuds were not limited to pop stars. Within the hip-hop world, artists like Cannabis, Vanilla Ice, and Benzino also found themselves at odds with Eminem, often with career-damaging results. However, in the case of Eminem and Ja Rule, their relationship initially began with mutual respect as the two successful rap stars maintained a friendly rapport and party together. As 50 Cent revealed in a 2022 interview with The Breakfast Club, They had a relationship because they, they had hung out together and got high together. Okay. So from there, he felt like there was something that there was closer than there was based on that. This is Ja, so mm -hmm. he... This dynamic changed when Eminem and Dr. Dre signed Ja Rule's biggest rival to Shady Aftermath Entertainment. Although Eminem initially tried to stay out of the conflict, the turbulent 2000s hip-hop scene soon erupted into a complex web of diss tracks and beefs. The beef between Queens natives 50 Cent and Ja Rule serves as the backdrop for Ja Rule's eventual conflict with Eminem. While Ja Rule enjoyed platinum success in the late 1990s and into the new millennium, 50 Cent was still struggling to establish himself in the music industry. This fueled 50 Cent's resentment as he saw Ja Rule as a fake gangster with no real street credibility, despite Ja Rule's frequent use of It's Murder as his signature chant in his song. In reality, Ja Rule's family was known in their Queens neighborhood for being devout Jehovah's Witnesses, and a young Ja would accompany them door to door spreading the word of God. In response to Ja Rule's image, 50 Cent released the diss track Your Life's on the Line in 1999, directly targeting Ja Rule and mocking his lack of street credibility. In the chorus, 50 Cent raps, scream murder, I don't believe you, murder, fuck around and leave you, murder, I don't believe you, 
Murder, murder, your life's on the line. Making it clear that he viewed Ja Rule's gangster persona as nothing more than an act. In addition to 50's initial animosity towards Ja Rule, several incidents escalated their feud to a point of no return. The first major event occurred in 1999 when Ja Rule was robbed of his chain by a fellow Queens hustler named Lil Troy. According to 50 Cent, Ja Rule began to harbor a grudge against him because he had been seen hanging out with Lil Troy. However, Ja Rule dismissed this explanation. In a 2014 interview with Vlad TV, Ja Rule shared his perspective on the beef's origins, debunking the idea that the Lil Troy incident had anything to do with his animosity towards 50 Cent. He stated, So 50 used that as his end to have something to say about me. But it had nothing to do with him. I didn't even know you know this dude. His story is, I seen him with Troy out and about, and I got mad at him. Like, he had nothing to do with it. Why would I get mad at the guy next to the guy? His stories just don't add up. It just don't make sense. But to an outside source looking in, listening, it's like, oh, shit. People don't, they don't know what to believe, so they believe. Well, sometimes they don't know. The tension only escalated after the robbery. During Ja Rule's video shoot at Jamaica, Queens, 50 approached Ja Rule who ignored him, causing 50 Cent public embarrassment. Over the following months and years, 50 Cent relentlessly targeted Ja Rule in his music, making it his mission to expose Ja Rule as a fake gangster. In turn, Ja Rule refused to acknowledge 50, dismissing him as a nobody and accusing him of trying to gain notoriety off of his name. The conflict reached a boiling point when both artists were booked to perform at an Atlanta nightclub and got into a physical altercation beforehand. On March 24, 2000, both Ja Rule and 50 Cent's crews were at the famous Hit Factory recording studio in Manhattan. After being tipped off about 50 Cent's location, Ja Rule and his crew confronted him, resulting in an altercation that ended with 50 Cent being stabbed by Ja Rule's associate and fellow rapper Black Chop. 50 Cent was treated for a laceration to the chest and a partially collapsed lung. The beef seemed to peak in May 2000 when 50 Cent was shot nine times outside his grandmother's house in Jamaica, Queens. Following the shooting, 50 Cent was dropped from his record deal with Columbia Records, prompting Ja Rule to celebrate what he saw as a victory over his rival in his music. However, 50 Cent responded by releasing a series of mixtapes, including the acclaimed Power of a Dollar, with the same reckless abandon as before. Despite regaining his buzz on the streets, Ja Rule seemed unfazed, continuing to dominate the charts with hit after hit. Everything changed when 50 Cent's story of survival caught the attention of Eminem and Dr. Dre. Eminem later revealed in a 2003 interview with XXL Magazine, his life story sold me. To have a story behind the music is so important. This endorsement would soon shift the balance of power in the ongoing feud. After 50 Cent signed with Shady Aftermath Entertainment, Eminem and Dr. Dre provided him with the biggest platform in hip-hop to confront Ja Rule. This association with Eminem significantly boosted 50 Cent's visibility and influence. A prime example is his infectious Ja Rule diss track, Wangsta, which was included on the soundtrack for Eminem's film, 8 Mile, helping 50 Cent gain momentum and leveling the commercial playing field with Ja Rule. Despite Ja Rule and Irv Gotti expressing their displeasure with Eminem for signing 50 Cent, a direct conflict between Ja Rule and Eminem didn't immediately unfold. However, tensions soon escalated when Eminem mentioned Ja Rule in the Benzino diss track, Go to Sleep, which also featured DMX and OB. Hold up. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's one of my, that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite songs. Like, when I listened to this shit, it was hard. But DMX, he went in, but OB Trice, yeah, he wasn't, like, he ain't go all the way in, but... Damn, I ain't gonna lie to you, but I ain't gonna lie, but that record was fucking dope. It was fucking insane. It was incredible. I love it. He tries. In the song, Eminem delivered the line, Ja, you'll get it too, signaling his readiness to inherit 50 Cent's beef with Ja Rule. By early 2003, 50 Cent, Eminem, G-Unit, and Eminem's rap group D12 had formed an alliance against Ja Rule and Murder, Inc. Artists like DMX and Busta Rhymes also got involved, making guest appearances on diss tracks like Go To Sleep and Hail Mary. As the feud intensified, Ja Rule released one of the most notorious diss tracks of all time, Loose Chain. The track is infamous for its disrespectful nature and for sparking a barrage of retaliatory diss tracks from Eminem, D12, and 50 Cent. In Loose Chain, Ja Rule name-dropped Eminem's then-adolescent daughter Haley, who had become somewhat of a public figure due to Eminem's frequent mentions of her in his music. The most memorable and incendiary line from the track was, Em, you claim your mother's a crackhead, and Kim is a known s- So what's Haley gonna be when she grows up? After this video, 
Your life is never going to be the same. So I need you to stop whatever. This attack struck a personal chord with Eminem, who responded with a diss track titled Haley's Revenge, Do Re Mi. Though the track didn't feature an official verse from Eminem, it opened with a biting line from his daughter. Haley, what do you want to be when you grow up, baby? I don't know, but I don't want to grow up to be like Ja Rule's little dirty ass kids. D12 then took turns dissing Ja Rule before Eminem closed the track with a threatening interlude. Don't you ever say my little girl's name in a song again. F punk. P I'll f you up, boy. Never. Don't you never in your mother f life. Choke the shit out you, you little mother f midget. Haley will whip your mother f ass. The members of D12 <laughs> focus on mocking Ja Rule for his increasing attempts to emulate Tupac Shakur. By 2003, Ja Rule had begun adopting Tupac's style, wearing a bandana, getting similar tattoos, and embracing a more gangster persona, while still heavily incorporating R&B influences into his music. Swifty McVeigh delivered a scathing line. You and Pac's you a replica guy. If he was still alive, you would never get by. All you do is cry, b Keep it real. Life is more than imitating than eating pills. Obi Trice followed up with, use a mother actor slash Pac impersonating rapper slash Billie Holiday. How it happened? Artists in repertoire saw him in action. Pac's assassination. Def Jam grabbed him, told him, reenact him. You go platinum. They seen it for sure. I know that Afini Shakur don't enjoy Jeffrey Atkins reenacting her boy. This brutal exchange of diss tracks solidified the feud, leaving a lasting mark on hip hop history. Eminem, 50 Cent, and even Busta Rhymes, who got pulled into the feud after being dissed by Ja Rule, joined forces to mock Ja Rule for his exaggerated gangster persona and his habit of singing on tracks while claiming to be a tough guy. They collaborated on the diss track Hail Mary, a satirical homage to Tupac's song of the same name, poking fun at Ja Rule's obsession with Tupac. Eminem opens the track with a scathing critique of Ja Rule's character, rapping, You ain't no killer, you a p That ecstasy done got you all emotional and mushy, is wearing rags and photos, Ja's words being quoted, in the source, stealing Pac's shit like he just wrote it. He then delivers Dang. a humorous chorus, mimicking Tupac's style as he sings, Come get me, mother if you want shady. If Pac was still here now, he would never ride with Ja. Na 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 na. Buster Rhymes adds to the ridicule with his own jab, rapping, It's kinda funny, wanna be pop, wanna fake like you suck, running around talking shit that he ain't capable of. As the feud between both camps intensified, it became clear that the overwhelming popularity of Eminem and 50 Cent, along with their barrage of diss tracks, had shifted fan support in their favor. It was widely seen as a huge miscalculation by Ja Rule and Irv Gotti to go after Eminem, who at the time was the world's best-selling and most popular rapper. Eminem's reputation for engaging in rap beefs meant that, in addition to being one of the greatest lyricists in hip-hop, he was always prepared for conflict. His influence in the industry further compounded Murder, Inc.'s problems, as instead of gaining allies, they were alienating key figures at a time when they desperately needed support. Meanwhile, 50 Cent was gaining massive momentum and fan backing, bolstered by his miraculous comeback after being shot and his association with Eminem at the peak of his career. It was clear that 50 Cent was destined to be the next big star in hip-hop, and Murder, Inc. found themselves fighting against the tide of the entire music industry. Ja Rule and Murder, Inc.'s own declining success made it impossible for them to compete, both on the charts and in the streets. The label had failed to establish any stars beyond Ja Rule and Ashanti, and as their own star power waned, their adversaries, Eminem, D12, 50 Cent, and G-Unit, whose members each went on to release platinum albums, continued to rise with critically acclaimed chart-topping projects. In contrast, Murder, Inc. struggled to release albums for several of their artists, suggesting that the label may have overextended itself and was being pulled in too many directions. However, Ja Rule and Irv Gotti's most significant battle wasn't on the mic, but in the courtroom. The duo faced the fight of their lives when they were charged with money laundering on behalf of former Queens drug dealer, Kenneth Supreme McGriff. The federal government suggested that Murder, Inc. was a front for Supreme's illegal drug operations. This led to a raid on Murder, Inc.'s offices by federal agents on January 3, 2003, marking the beginning of a two-year legal battle against Chris and Irv Gotti. The brothers were forced to prove that their successful multi-million dollar record label was not involved in money laundering for the notorious Queens drug lord. The legal battle drained the label financially, with Chris and Irv Gotti reportedly spending upwards of $10 million in legal fees to defend their innocence. This financial strain crippled Murder, Inc., severely impacting their ability to compete with 50 Cent and Eminem on a musical level. 
As a result, Ja Rule's fifth studio album, Blood In My Eye, released on November 4, 2003, received mixed to negative review. In an attempt to counter criticism that he sang too much and didn't embody the gangster image he projected, Ja Rule shifted his creative direction. The love ballads with pop and R&B stars were replaced by hardcore features and grittier content. However, the album was poorly received, with many seeing it as the beginning of Ja Rule's decline in relevance. At the same time, Eminem was grappling with his own personal struggles, including addiction and a tumultuous home life with his wife Kim, who was frequently mentioned in his songs. By 2004, with his rivals weakened and the increasingly violent climate of hip-hop, Eminem decided to end the beef with his track, Like Toy Soldiers, from his 2004 album Encore. In the song, Eminem reflects on the reasons behind each conflict while expressing regret for getting involved in the first place. He raps, that Ja shit, I tried to squash it, it was too late to stop it, there's a certain line you just don't cross, and he crossed it. I heard him say Haley's name on a song, and I just lost it. The song was seen as a mature move by Eminem, who at the time held the upper hand over his opponents due to his monumental star power as the world's highest selling rapper, the financial backing of Interscope Records, and the fact that both of his adversaries were struggling financially. Despite his dominant position, Eminem chose to take the high road, perhaps sensing defeat in his foes, and effectively ended the beat. He continues, And even though the battle was won, I feel like we lost it. I spent so much energy on it, honestly I'm exhausted, and I'm so caught in it, I almost feel like I'm the one who caused it, this ain't what I'm in hip hop for, it's not why I got in it. In the years that followed, hip hop's cynical nature saw Ja Rule fade from the spotlight, while 50 Cent's career continued a bit longer before he too experienced a decline in record sales. However, 50 Cent has managed to stay more relevant than Ja Rule through various business ventures and a successful career as a television producer. Meanwhile, Eminem's music, though still commercially successful, lost some of its earlier impact. As for the beef, things have largely quieted down in terms of diss tracks, with Ja Rule and 50 Cent mostly trading barbs on social media these days. Eminem has remained relatively silent but occasionally takes a shot, as he did on Guilty Conscience 2 from his 2024 album, The Death of Slim Shady, where he raps, When I say, f midgets, I mean Ja Rule, oh. referencing his 2003 diss track, Haley's Revenge, where he called Ja Rule a little motherfucking midget. Despite these occasional jabs, the two rappers seem to have reached an understanding about the nature of their conflict. In a 2014 interview with Vlad TV, Ja Rule recounted a conversation he had with Eminem during a flight layover, where they had a respectful conversation. According to Ja, Eminem admitted that it was all just a rap beef and that he had no personal animosity towards Ja Rule, but was simply supporting his artist, 50 Cent. I remember while this was all going on, I seen him. We was at Teterboro and we were switching jets. He had just got off the jet. I was getting on that same jet going wherever I was going. And me and him had a conversation right there. This was this was while it oh while it was happening yeah. oh okay you know what I'm saying and it was a a man to man respectful conversation like I know what it is him and M's like you know it, it, I don't really got no hard feelings towards you it's just <laughs> that's home team and it's a rap beef and yeah, he signed to my label he signed to my label you know yeah. what I'm saying and I'm like I I know what it is you know what I'm saying I said I ain't I ain't got nothing against you neither and that was that. The beef between Eminem and Ja Rule, and by extension, between Eminem, 50 Cent, and Ja Rule, remains a significant chapter in early 2000s hip-hop history. It played a crucial role in the downfall of Ja Rule, Irv Gotti, and Murder, Inc., creating a lasting impact on the genre. Man, bro, so let me tell you what had went down. And I was two bands away from getting bro a whole barbershop. Look, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna ease, I'm gonna have to say this to y'all, but... And I'm gonna let y'all know this, like, and I like, I'm gonna say this, like, back in the day, I ain't knew who Ja Rule, who, who like, who he really was back then. I did him, hear his music playing and all that type of shit. But when I like when Eminem came out since I was born, like, and after that, right, after that, right, I ain't knew there was a beef going on. But that was like years ago, like, and I'm gonna say this to you, Ja Rule got what he deserved. And I'm gonna say this to you. That's when that's that, that's between the groups between Murder Inc., Gen Unit, and, and D12. And I ain't gonna lie to you, but I ain't gonna lie to you, man. But these niggas they got destroyed. And I'm gonna say this to you. Ja Rule should have never, should have never dissed his own. Should have never this is this the like trying to put somebody's kids involved in a situation like that. Never drag the kids into it. <laughs>
So, anyway, I want to thank y'all guys for watching this video. So, y'all know to do like, comment, subscribe, turn the no notifications, and tell me what you think about this video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.